it's almost 3.30. I'm really excited to get into this topic, um, balancing blood sugar to accelerate your path to a healthy fertility. Uh, definitely near and dear to my heart. So it's 3.30 right now. We'll give some people a few minutes to log on. But yeah, so why is blood sugar balance such a great topic for fertility? Well, the biggest reason is because you have control of it at the end of the day. In most cases, there are things that you can do to improve your overall blood sugar health and, and thus your fertility um, and your overall health. So let's get started. So welcome everyone. Please let me know your name and where you're watching from in the comments. I'm so happy to have you here. And if you're watching the replay, please still mention your name and um, you know anything, any questions that you have while you're watching as well. So my name is Dr. Katie Wood. I am a pharmacist and a fer fertility coach as well. I have experience of over nine years. Um, I myself had my own struggles becoming pregnant and the lack of guidance and support uh, that I had in conventional medicine basically made me having to do a lot of inside research on my own. I explored alternative medicine and thus I ended up healing my body from the inside out and I was able to conceive um, after 10 months and I had a beautiful pregnancy, a healthy baby and it was just an amazing experience overall. I'm very grateful for the experience. So I do just wanna let everyone know if you have any questions, I will get to these as much as possible. And any that I miss, I will definitely go back and answer after the event. So please ask away. And there will be a special announcement at the end of the training. So make sure that you stay until the end because you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So today we're gonna to be talking about the impact that unregulated blood sugar can have not only on your health, but on your overall fertility. We're gonna discuss nutritional ways that you can help to balance your blood sugar with, and also discuss other hidden causes that could be sabotaging your glucose control. Um, so, impact of blood sugar on fertility. So, obviously, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this time and time again, but it is so important, especially with all the different foods that are available to us, lots of false advertising, making it seem like it's a health food when in fact it's really not. Um, when you take out one thing like fat, you're most likely replacing it with sugar and vice versa. So high intake of sugar and refined carbohydrates are associated with an increased risk of infertility. When we eat sugar and simple carbohydrate foods, so thinking like white bread, regular pasta, like saltine crackers, the amount of sugar in our blood rises quickly and significantly. So the body then relies on a hormone called insulin to move glucose out of the blood and into our muscle cells for energy production. But what happens is when we eat simple carbohydrates on a regular basis, the body is forced to keep pumping out insulin almost constantly to keep our blood sugar in a normal healthy range and this means that our cells are just being bombarded all day long with insulin insulin's message so unfortunately what can happen is over time our cells begin to basically say uh, -uh i don't want to listen to you anymore they begin to reduce their sensitivity to insulin's message uh, to stop the influx of sugar and this is called insulin res resistance. So insulin resistance is associated with impaired follicle and egg development. That is exactly the opposite of what you want when you're trying to have a healthy ovulation. Implantation failure, so basically um, the egg is unable to have a healthy attachment um, to the uterus poor embryo development if you do make it to that stage. And then insulin resistance is a primary feature with PCOS. So that is a very common um, syndrome that women are, you know, all over are, are being diagnosed with left and right. So, but it's not just women that can suffer from 
these hormonal imbalances. Um, elevated blood sugar in males can actually cause decreased testosterone levels and reduced semen concentration and motility. So if your eating habits and your blood sugar control are leaning towards insulin resistance pre-pregnancy, this can be an absolute recipe for disaster during pregnancy. So when you, basically if you're eating that way during your fertility journey, you will most likely continue those patterns and those habits while you are pregnant. So having a diet high in sugar and refined carbohydrates, or maybe you do try to eat healthy, but you're just not eating in the most optimal way, so you're still having an unregulated blood sugar, this can increase your risk of gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, and even miscarriage. And this can also increase the chance of neural tube defects, congenital heart disease, as well as having a lasting effect on your future child's metabolism, which could lead to a higher BMI and potentially a diabetes diagnosis for them during childhood. So I don't say this to scare you, I promise I don't. But I just want you to know that research is suggesting that one out of three adults has prediabetes. And in this group, nine out of 10 don't know that they have it. So this is a big concern, whether you're trying to get pregnant or not. So I want you to ask yourself, are you um, experiencing any symptoms that can come with prediabetes? So increased thirst, having to urinate frequently, having trouble falling asleep, waking up at night as well, um, any tingling in your hands or feet. There's so many different signs that you could look out for and then you could talk to your provider or your coach about it. Um, and have you ever had a fasting blood glucose test or have your A1C tested? These are all things that you could definitely explore to see where your current uh, blood sugar status is at. Okay, so now we're going to dive into how to build your fertility boosting plate. So you want to aim for 50% of your plate to consist of non-starchy vegetables with some fat like butter or olive oil. So what is a non-starchy vegetable? So think leafy greens, broccoli, asparagus, cauliflower, bell peppers, celery, cucumber, zucchini, and cabbage. And then a quarter of your plate can include a healthy protein and healthy fats. Uh, some proteins typically already have naturally occurring fat, so you can um, include that or um, include that in your fat intake. The remaining one quarter can be a quality carbohydrate, which could include starchy vegetables, fruit, quinoa, couscous, buckwheat, chickpeas, organic oats, just to give you some examples there. Now I have not included specific portions or calories because each woman has their own unique needs, especially based on your lifestyle. If you have a more sedentary lifestyle, maybe you have a desk job versus someone who's uh, an athletic trainer or you know is a marathon runner, something like that. So everyone is very unique in terms of what they require. So um, it is highly recommended to eat your breakfast especially within one hour of waking. And definitely be sure to focus more on quality protein and healthy fats than um, focusing on carbohydrate rich breakfast. So you definitely want to have enough protein and fat in there to keep you feeling full and satisfied until the afternoon. Um, carbohydrate rich breakfasts like oatmeal, cereal, without a lot of protein or fat, that's going to give you a blood sugar uh, spike and then crash. You're gonna be hangry. You're gonna be grabbing for most likely not the healthiest snack because your body's gonna give you um, those cravings. So definitely focusing on protein and fat. Um, and then definitely eating breakfast before you have any sort of caffeine on an empty stomach um, because Having caffeine on an empty stomach can spike your cortisol levels, which we will um, end up talking about how that can create hormone imbalance and also affecting your blood sugar. So I want you to ask yourself and just be honest and truth truthful, which one of these tips do I need to work on? Um, it could be 
having breakfast, period. I know a lot of women who don't eat breakfast at all for whatever reason it may be, a busy lifestyle in the morning, they're just not hungry, um, and then definitely a lot of people have coffee before they even eat anything. I used to be guilty of that myself, so no shame here. So here are some tips on how to keep your blood sugar balanced. So these recommendations are great for every woman, especially for those who have PCOS. Adopting these practices not only will serve you by keeping your blood sugar balanced pre-pregnancy, but it can actually help you prevent gestational diabetes during pregnancy and setting your future child up for a stable blood sugar during their lifetime. So tip number one, don't eat naked carbs. So think bread, pasta, rice, tortillas, cereal, crackers, um, fruit. You want to dress them up with fiber, fat, and or protein. So think um, any veggies, avocado, healthy fats like grass-fed butter, coconut or olive oil, beans, cheese, eggs, meat or fish, uh, Greek yogurt is another healthy option, nuts and seeds. So the easiest example is instead of eating an apple by itself, you're going to eat it with peanut or nut butter or instead of having crackers by themselves, you can have them with some cheese. So by eating this way, you will avoid having a blood sugar spike and crash and you will feel satisfied and fuller longer. So another tip is you can dilute one tablespoon of any vinegar the most popular is apple cider vinegar in water or on your food, such as a salad dressing, before eating. Um, and this can help reduce blood sugar spikes by about 30%. That's pretty significant. Um, if it's not convenient to do this with every meal, I highly recommend that you at least try it when you're having a carb-heavy meal, such as pizza or pasta. Now the next tip is eating your food in the right order. So, um, you know, depending on what you're eating, ideally this is how you want to do it. So eat your vegetables first, because that's going to contain a lot of fiber. Then have your proteins and fats, and then you can have your starches and any fruit. This is going to reduce your glucose spike post meal by up to 73%. It's going to keep you fuller longer, reduce any cravings, and keep your hormones happy and balanced, and reduce inflammation. So another fun tip is exercising after a meal. Now I'm not saying to go out and do a HIIT exercise after you eat, because sometimes that can be uncomfortable, but simply moving your body for as little as 10 minutes after eating can help with having a smaller blood sugar spike, improved mood, lower inflammation and lower release of insulin. So even just walking or maybe getting up and picking up the table, doing the dishes, picking up around the house, playing with um, your toddler if you have one, playing with your dog or your cats, um, anything to get the body moving for at least 10 minutes. Um, and as a bonus, I'm going to teach you how you can have your cake and eat it too. So choosing to have dessert over having a sweet snack um, is ideal. So having dessert is basically, dessert is when you have it after a meal. So having it on a full stomach after a meal will result in a smaller glucose spike due to slower and smaller absorption of glucose and fructose compared to having a sweet snack on an empty stomach. This will be absorbed faster leading to a blood sugar spike and then it's going to just lead to hunger and further cravings so that is not what you want so ask yourself what does your breakfast look like if you eat breakfast at all if you are eating breakfast is it more carb heavy do you are you um making sure that you're having healthy proteins and fats in there to keep you fuller longer when you do eat breakfast, when is the next time that you become hungry? Is it in an hour or two? Or are you able to stay satisfied until lunchtime? So just ask yourself those questions. Okay, 
So now we're going to talk about hidden causes that can sabotage your blood sugar. So sleep, poor sleep quality is a risk factor for increased blood sugar. So I'm talking about the amount of sleep you're getting, the quality of sleep that you're getting, and the stages of sleep that you experience. So just one night of sleep deprivation can, can increase insulin resistance. Poor sleep can also increase your cortisol, which negatively affects glucose or your blood sugar, and it also increases inflammation in the body, which is not good for your health or your fertility. So how can you improve your sleep? Well, I'm going to give you a few of my favorite sleep tips. So number one, trying to stick to a consistent sleep schedule. So going to bed around the same time, waking up around the same time, um, making sure that you're exposing yourself to natural sunlight upon waking. So one thing that I love to do is I open all of our curtains um, as soon as I wake up. And then, you know, like I said, making sure you're going to bed around the same time, and this is going to set your circadian rhythm up for success. You want to aim for eight hours of sleep a night. Um, this is going to help your body kind of restore itself, rejuvenate itself. Um, you definitely want to avoid caffeine later in the day. This can vary for everyone. I know I personally cannot have caffeine after 3 or 4 p.m. because then I'm usually finding myself um, not being able to fall asleep. You want to avoid blue light from screens at least one to two hours prior to sleep. So this is a great time to read or journal about your day, especially if any stress stressors came up, just write them all out, get them on paper, out of your mind and on paper. And then um, setting your environment up for success. So keeping it cool, dark, um, maybe you have some white noise going on if you live in a bustling place. Um, and then we have stress. So stress can come from many things. A few being emotional. Um, so say you're going through IVF or you've just been struggling to get pregnant. That's a very emotional experience to have for yourself. I know it was very emotional for myself. Um, physical stress, this could be over-exercising, illness, um, and then there's environmental stressors as well. So we're bombarded with toxins every day and a lot of times it's out of our control. But one, um, just to kind of give an example, is mold. If you have mold in your house, that can be a huge stressor on your body. So there's acute stress, so having to slam on your brakes really quick in traffic, or chronic stress, so going to a job that you hate, you know, five days out of the week, or maybe even more, financial stressors, and then, um, you know, chronic stress could also be the emotional stress of fertility struggles or any other struggles that you may be having in your life. So when the body is under chronic stress, this can affect our blood sugar negatively. When under stressful conditions, the body basically prepares itself by ensuring that enough energy will be readily available if we were in um, a state of famine. So insulin levels will fall and adrenaline levels will rise and glucose will be released from the liver. At the same time, cortisol levels will rise and this is going to cause body tissues to be less sensitive to insulin. And this is just going to result in more glucose sitting in the bloodstream. And over time, that's just going to keep happening. And it's kind of a vicious circle because when you are under stress, you have poor sleep. And we already talked about how sleep and stress can affect your blood sugar. And when you have poor sleep, you tend to make um, less favorable nutrition and lifestyle choices. You might not eat as well. You might not do the exercise because you're just not feeling up to it. So it's a very, very vicious cycle. So I want you to ask yourself, did you know before this that sleep and stress can affect your blood sugar in this way? And are you suffering from poor sleep or extreme stress? Um, just something to think about. And something I wanted to mention in this could be a discussion in and of itself is baby's first 1,000 days. This 
first 1,000 days of baby's life is the most critical time for development. And that's development on all facets, you know, brain development, physical development, just setting up their overall metabolism and just so many things. This starts from conception to baby's second birthday. So that's why I stress the importance of making sure that you are in this beautiful, vibrant, healthy state yourself before you become pregnant. Um, that's why it's so much more than just getting a positive pregnancy test. It's making sure you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's and just taking care of yourself before you sign up for this um, basically responsibility because it is our responsibility as parents, as mothers, to set up our children for lifelong success, whether that be um, developmentally or, or, you know, anything really. So the moment you start, you make the decision to start a family, this is when this responsibility starts. It's not when you get that pregnancy test. It's not when you bring baby home. It is the moment you decide you want to start a family, that this responsibility is on your shoulders. So that is why I'm so passionate about helping women feel their healthiest, you know, working on any root cause um, issues for fertility struggles whether it be nutritional, stress, or otherwise. So this leads me into my announcement that I'm so excited. Um, I am opening the doors to my Confident Conception membership again. Um, the, the doors will be open until Tuesday, September 20th at 4 p.m. And this is very intentional. So you can join before we have our very first group coaching call where we will dive into even more nutrition facts and how you can support a healthy fertility and your future child. We will be discussing how to read nutrition labels to help reduce overwhelm and so you can feel confident when choosing products at the grocery store or online, wherever you get your groceries. We will be diving into all about meal planning and prepping, how to simplify it and incorporate it even if you have a busy lifestyle, and then also recreating leftovers to make them fun and yummy again. Um, I know a lot of people are turned off by leftovers, but leftovers can be a lifesaver at times. So kind of recreating them into new meals can be really, really fun. It's something that my husband and I really enjoy. Um, and as well as answering any of your questions related to nutrition or otherwise. So this call is happening very soon next week. So that's why you have until Tuesday, September 20th to sign up. So I have some current members already and I just wanted to share some of their wins. So um, some of them have significantly improved their sleep and stress. They have started incorporating joyful movement into their day. They are setting goals each week in the group for motivation and accountability, and they're starting to create healthy morning routines, they're incorporating meditation, and they're building awareness around their habits and where they need, you know, a little bit more work, but they're still giving themselves compassion because this is a process. It's day by day, step by step, you know, small steps lead to sustainable changes and they're prioritizing self-care because a lot of times in the busyness of life, we as women, as providers, we put ourselves on the back burner. And I'm so happy to see these wins um, that they're having for themselves. It's amazing. This membership was created with love and intention because I was in your place not too long ago, just a few years ago. It was created to fill in the gaps where self-doubt, confusion, blame or shame can creep up. It's there to be a guide for you to save you time, money, energy, maybe even tears from frustration because I've already been there and I've taken the guesswork out of it for you. I've laid out a beautiful blueprint that can accelerate your path to a vibrant and healthy pregnancy. 
It was created to give you support, the type of support that I longed for when I was struggling to conceive but got zero support from my conventional providers. I had to do my own research and advocate for myself. So what do you get with this membership? It is a six month long deep dive into literally accelerating your fertility journey. There is a new topic every month, which will include videos and worksheets to work through these. There's a weekly Q&A thread to ask me anything. As a pharmacist, I am the most accessible healthcare provider and you don't have to call your doctor, wait on hold, and be told that a nurse will maybe get back to you. You can ask every single week anything that comes up for you. There's weekly threads to share your goals, your wins, your challenges, and this is for support and accountability to set you up for success. We have monthly group coaching calls, which is why I'm opening the doors until our very first call so you can get in on this. There's a new meditation every month to shift your mindset, release trauma, and reduce your stress. There's a new monthly meal plan and guide. It has everything you need for the month to meal prep, meal plan, has everything you need to buy, and everything you need to prep in a very nice little package to make it as easy as possible. You can get all of this for just $97 a month for six months. That's a crazy, no-brainer, hell yes, price. Amazing. So I'm leaving you with this offer until September 20th at 4 p.m. After that, the price will be increasing. So if you've been thinking about it or you want to do it, but you just haven't made it a priority for yourself, I strongly suggest you put this at the top of your list and sign up today. So if you have any questions at all, send me a DM. If you want to make sure that this program is for you, we can chat, we can connect to make sure it's an aligned fit. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any questions at all about what I went over, put a, your questions in the comments and I will get back to them. And like I said, this amazing deal is available until September 20th at 4 p.m. And after that, the price will be increasing. So I hope you have an amazing day. Let me know if there's anything I can do to answer a question for you or if you just want to connect. And I can't wait to hear from you. Have a great day.